Hmm, how do I get my child to write more? You might be faced with a reluctant writer. Your child may feign tiredness, hunger, thirst, near the bathroom, hand hurts, or they conveniently lose all the pens and pencils. Or you might have a child who's willing to complete the comprehension tasks. But when it comes to the creative writing, their mind goes blank, they're at a loss, and they become frustrated. Or they must drop a paragraph, but it's lacking detail. You know it's not going to get the marks. What do you do? Well, let's go to the resistant children first, those who are resistant to writing. Now, it might be true that their hand hurts, especially if they've been engaging in remote learning. They may have been using computers or iPads, and so they're not using their hands as much as they used to. They're not doing as much writing. Or they may have been attending school, but even so, they won't be doing as much writing as they did before, and so their hand might be physically tired. In which case, it's better to focus on quality than quantity. Encourage them to write a few sentences, great sentences, and this will help to build the strengths. Engaging in hand and finger movements as well can help increase the strength and therefore the stamina for them to write. Play-doh and pegs are great ways and fun ways as well to actually um, use and engage these muscles. Changing the pen or pencil might help. Getting grips, raising the desk, even the quality of the paper can have an impact for some children. Card or um, whether it smooths the texture as well can have an impact. So it might be worthwhile exploring all those physical aspects of writing. Now it might be just that your child feels there's no point. Everything can be done on laptop or iPads, computers, so what's the point of writing? But actually, research has shown time and time again that writing things down helps us cognitively. It helps us to retain information better. Even great novelists and writers tend to write things down on, by pen and paper and then translate it to typing word document. So for a child, they probably won't care too much about that. Unless they're older and they're preparing for exams and it's more tangible for them, then it might be worthwhile explaining that to them. However, if not, then actually getting them to explore how much we do use handwriting in our day-to-day -day lives. We might not even realise it. Lots of forms are completed by hand. Labelling jars in the kitchen is usually by hand as well. Also, receiving a hand ca handmade card, a handwritten card, or a letter done by hand is much more meaningful than just something that's been typed up. So perhaps it's worthwhile ex explaining that to your child or, or demonstrating that. Encourage them to write letters to their friends, to relatives. You could even encourage their friends and relatives to write to them, or you could write a letter to them and then they can receive it in the post and generate that excitement. You could also get them to be creative. Maybe they can design and create a menu for the day for themselves and for the whole family. Or perhaps you can encourage them to write a poem or a song or a story for you. Perhaps you could write a few lines for them so that they can start to engage it. You know, I used to um, leave notes in my younger brother's um, bedroom for him to find little notes so that um, he would read them and it made him feel good and then he would be more inclined then to leave me a note. I remember in my bag finding a note written by him and it's small but it's something and it still helps them to engage in that writing process and to consider their audience and their reader as well. So actually it engages quite a lot of the tools required for writing. Now, for children who are perhaps not as resistant but are at a loss of ideas, think about this. How do we experience the world around us? We experience it through our five senses, what we can see, hear, smell, taste and touch. So why not encourage your children to consider that? In literature and literary analysis, we would look at visual imagery, auditory imagery, olfactory imagery, gustatory imagery, and tactile imagery. And together we call that sensory imagery. And you can make it really tangible. So for example, getting your child's favorite toy and asking them questions, well, what does it look like? What can you see? And they might be very 
literal about it, they might say it's uniform. Okay, but what about its size? What does it look like in terms of its size? And get them to think about things that they may be able to relate to. For example, a real life horse or a donkey or a miniature pony. Then get them to think about different aspects. You know, what are its hooves like in terms of its shape? What about its horn? Is it like an ice cream cone? Or its ears? The shape of its ears, what do they look like? Are they similar to your own ears? And that way then they will start to think creatively about what they can see. Then you might consider, well, actually, what might it sound like? Now again, they might be very literal and say, it's a stuffed toy, it doesn't make any sound. And that's fine, but then get them to think about, well, actually relate it to noises from a horse or a donkey. And again, you can Google that and find YouTube clips of that. So then they can start to think about the quality of the sound, the tone. Is it rough and gruff or is it a sweet sounding voice? And again, actually the same with visuals, the color as well. You can get them to, you know, look at um, a great resources, looking at, you know, paints because they have the, the color charts and get them to think about that or comparing the color to something else that they have. So for example, I don't know if you can see, but it's actually a light pink. And then these are my shorts. And then you might want to get them to compare actually the lightness and the darkness. So then you're thinking about the shades of a color as well that they might not consider otherwise. Then you might want to consider what does it feel like? Is it soft? How does it relate to the clothes you're wearing or the hair on your head? You might also think about, well, what does it smell like? Um, I've drawn the line with taste. You probably don't want them to lick their toys. I'm not encouraging that. Um, but yeah, like what does it smell like? How does it compare to other smells? And then again, as I said before, you can make it relatable to anything. So again, like the clothes, you know, what is the pattern on this? remind you of? What does it make you think of? And then again, it could be anything, as I said, even this. I'm a big nerd. I love Marvel and comics. You know, you can get them to consider this. How does it relate to the shorts? Perhaps this pattern is fun, dynamic and engaging. Maybe it's because it's suitable for adventure, for children. Perhaps this is karma because it's for the beach where you relax. So getting them to think about visuals and, you know, making it relatable to everyday objects will help to engage them creatively so they have more to write about. And another thing you can do is actually get them to look at their favourite books or stories and then get them to magpie the story. Now that doesn't mean copying it. So for example, Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven starts with once upon a midnight dreary, while I sat weak and weary. And it's quite a fun little line. And you can get them to change the words. So rather than once upon a midnight dreary, you can change the time. Maybe it's midday. Maybe it's not dreary. And by encouraging them to change and play around with those words, they're able to have a structure that allows them to generate creatively ideas that suit a particular style. So you can say create a winter scene, create a summer scene, a happy scene, a depressing scene. And that way then they have a framework and a structure. And it's quite fun to see how actually changing a few words alters the whole meaning and brings it to life in a different way. So in summary then, what I encourage you to do if you have a reluctant writer is one, focus on quality, not quantity. Make writing practical, perhaps by encouraging them to write letters or postcards, designing a menu, writing down their favourite recipes, creating their own songs. You can also engage in that yourself by writing your child letters or writing a little piece for them, leaving a note around the house, making a note for them to read whilst they eat their lunch. You can also get them, if they're into video games, perhaps pausing their game and writing some speech for the characters. You could also encourage them to pause the game and look at what's going on in that scene. The other top tip is consider the world around you. How do we experience the world through our five senses? Visual, auditory, olfactory, gustatory, 
and tactile and using everyday objects to enrich their writing by getting them to zoom in and focus on different aspects, perhaps that they haven't noticed before. And then finally, choosing works that they're perhaps familiar with and getting them just to alter a few words. It gets them to creatively think about the impact on the reader and helps them to craft their writing so that it's specific and relatable and actually driven to the task so that they are able to get more marks. So thank you for now. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please feel free to um, leave some comments. It will be great to have some feedback and I'll see you in the next blog and the next video. Bye for now.